Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here, Moss Pawn and Gun. Today we've got another five guns video for you. And we've been thinking about different uh, five guns topics. And one of the things that we came up with for sure we needed to do some time ago was top five truck guns. Mm -hmm. All right. So a truck gun, I think where that term comes from is back in the old days, you know, poachers carrying around guns in their truck and killing deer and other animals at night and doing other unsavory things. I think that's how the term is more or less developed by people, you know, yeah. rednecks using the term. Mm, don't forget about the folks who would just readily carry a gun in their truck anyways. My dad used to carry a 22 in the truck all the time, dispatch little critters over at the farm. Sure. You know, that was a truck gun. Well, I think so. for the purposes of this video, what truck gun for us is going to mean is uh, let's say that it's just everyday carry, but for your truck, mm -hmm. right? Uh, many of us, you probably remember a, uh, a video we did a couple of years ago uh, called Five Things You Need in Your Car. Now that video might be a little far-fetched and, and everything like that, but uh, in terms of five guns, uh, everybody that I know personally carries some type of a long gun mm -hmm. in their car. Yeah, a long gun, either a rifle or a shotgun, and you know, most of the time you carry a handgun on your person, and if you really get into something sticky or whatever the case may be, or just to be prepared, you're going to carry a rifle and a shotgun. I mean, it's no different than a law enforcement officer carrying a Remington 870 and a Bushmaster XM15 in the back of their patrol car ready sure. to go. Why not? So, so in light of that, what guns would, would suit themselves well for that purpose? Well, in our opinion, got to have a Glock. You and your Glocks. I like Glocks. I they do don't too. like us, but we yeah. like Glocks. But this is my Everyday Carry 19. As you can see, it has a lot of Everyday Carry fuzz on it. And uh, you know, I just slapped the Surefire. Um, X300 on here. I usually run this on my 17. Normally just carry this without the light on it, but stuck the Surefire X300 uh, on there just for like glove box use. You're just keeping under your seat or whatever in a little side holster or whatever. You pull this thing out. Okay, so you got momentary light right here. Full on. This is like 500 lumens, so you can see a good long way with this thing. You know, some little True Dot night sights on here. I mean, that's just a good solid gun. I mean, there's no other way to I mean, that's, that's something that can go, you know, as a truck gun, you know, riding, you know, under your seat or in the console. Of course, you know, make sure you're following all your local uh, city, state ordinances, laws. Uh, certain states might have certain laws that pertain to how a firearm is carried in the vehicle. You need to be mindful of that. Mm -hmm. We're not uh, claiming to be legal experts by any means. We're just showing you five guns that would be well suited for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Some uh, states and some municipalities might have rules that say you're not supposed to have a round chambered or you're supposed to have magazines, ammunition separate and the guns locked up. Make sure you're checking all your local laws to know what's allowed and what's not. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of guns, long guns uh, in a car or, or truck. I like bullpups because they're nice and compact. I mean, right here, in my opinion, this gun right here is the king of the hill for having a, a nice, small, compact firearm uh, in a car or truck that you can easily deploy and pull out and use. This is an FNPS 90. Mm -hmm. Shoots 5.7 by 28 from a 50-shot magazine. I've just got a Burris Fast Fire 3 on top of it. Sling. Everything it needs and nothing it don't. Just a nice, bare bones, simple bullpup. Uh, holds a lot of shots in the magazine. If I had to, now granted, I wouldn't want to have to do this, but if I had to actually shoot it from a vehicle, like sitting in the driver's seat or passenger seat, I can shoot this gun from inside a vehicle and it's downward ejecting. So all the brass pops out of this little chute down here on the bottom. And uh, this is just a great firearm. Uh, and in my opinion, one of the most ideal truck guns there is. And I'll tell you what, I mean, this platform just overall is very futuristic and whatnot. And I mean, it's just lightweight, very ergonomic. I mean, it's easy to shoot this thing one hand. You can access all of your controls right here, one handed. Yep. You know, and remember, just, one of the things that we're getting at with this particular video is you might find yourself in a situation where you've got a bunch of uh, rubes trying to rob you. You, you pull up at a, at a stoplight somewhere in a big busy city or something and it's late at night and some guys decide they want to rob you or do something silly, mm -hmm. you got a way to stop that. Well, I mean, it, the whole idea behind this is, you know, you, you have your everyday carry, your handgun that you keep on your person at all times that you can conceal or open carry, you know, based on whatever you want to do. Sure. But I prefer to conceal and Eric does as well most yep. of the time, but having a good rifle is kind of hard to beat. So moving down the line here. We've got a Tavor. Uh, you guys know that I'm a fan of this particular rifle. I like it a lot. 
Uh, one of the, the nice things about a bull pup when you're looking at something like a Devore is that I've got a 16 and a half inch barrel here. Uh, so I get full velocity uh, in the size that is as small as or smaller than a standard SBR AR. Mm -hmm. About a 10 and a half inch barrel to SBR with a classical stock. All right, this one's got one of the vampires on it with the pressure switch so I can light up something at night if I need to. Um, I've been finding myself liking the Meprolite uh, sights quite a bit. You're going to see another one here in a moment on my Benelli M4, uh, but it's always on. So it is fiber optic and tritium, uh, so you get an always on optic. Nothing to mess with, nothing to play with. This is a gun that I can pull out and the sight is always on. I don't have to worry about it, uh, and that's one of the appeals. Uh, now granted, the, the point of aim and the small reticle uh, size can, can be a little bit difficult for some to get used to. Uh, also, the size of the actual aim point that's in it, you know, they have some, they're like a little triangle, like on my shotgun. Uh, this one has like a circle with a fairly large dot in the center. Mm -hmm. Not really quite so good for precise long range shooting, but for <coughs> up close and personal, that's definitely where this rig uh, here is is well suited. I mean, I like a good Tavor. The only thing you're missing off this is your sling, which I think is still floating around in my truck. Yeah, you have my sling. Oops. Good gun right here. Yep. I mean, I do like bullpups quite a bit, but I, I haven't been able to quite get around the Tavor just yet because I like suppressing everything. We're going to get into that in a minute, but sure. let's talk about non uh, non SBR type guns first. Okay. So like these shotguns, you know, we mentioned like carrying around like a nice 870 or like a Mossberg 500 or something like that sure. as a LEO in a patrol car. But you know, what if you're just uh, you know normal guy and you want to carry some major firepower? Well, you tote the Vanilla M4 semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun and I don't think there's a thing that you can't get done with this gun you know speaking of your Meprolite you know you've got it set up on here these come from the factory with a uh, accessory rail on top for mounting a small red dot or whatever you really want you can also get um, clamp on flashlight mounts from like Nordic components and things like that but I think if I was going to carry this gun in the truck I'd have a good light on here pressure pad and maybe a smaller red dot but boy this thing right here I mean, if you can't get the job done oh, yeah. with an M4, there's a problem. This, this is one of my favorite shotguns. Um, you know, I, I wasn't in the Marine Corps, but I did run into a lot of guys in the Marines that just absolutely love this shotgun, and for good reason. Uh, when you're a soldier or Marine or whoever, sailor, wearing body armor, you have that stock collapse, and you've got a nice short length of pull that when you add the, the thickness of the body armor into mm -hmm. it, it sets there just right like yeah. it needs to. And uh, this is just a great shotgun. If you're not wearing body armor, okay, fine. Uncollapse the stock and you're good to go. This is a law enforcement M4, okay? Uh, they don't generally sell them in this configuration, but you don't have to go with a Benelli M4, mm -hmm. um, but a shotgun in general, like we said, does lend itself well as a trunk gun. Uh, it doesn't have to be a truck gun, it can be a trunk gun. So say you're in a, in a car and you wanna stuff a shotgun in your trunk like a, a policeman might would. Uh, many policemen have like these, um, uh, big like plastic dividers that go in the uh, bottoms of their trunk in their in their patrol car and they can set up shotgun or anything they want so mm -hmm. like a Mossberg 590A1 or a uh, Remington 870 or a, a BPS tactical well, one of my good knock around you know, guns that I carry in the truck quite often uh, is my Beretta 1201 FP and it's a an older police trade-in and that thing's all beat to hell I mean it's basically like a Benelli M1 Yep. And it's just a semi-automatic, but that thing will run anything from like Winchester AA, super handicaps, all the way up to three inch mags. I mean, without yep. any issue whatsoever. One of the nice things about the 1201 that he's talking about is that a lot of times you can find them uh, on the used market, oh, like a lot of law bills. enforcement agencies will just trade them in mm -hmm. and stuff. And it's a great little semi-automatic shotgun that you can get for a fraction of the price of so that Benelli Under 500 it. bucks, easy. I mean, and they're great, great shotguns. So what if you want something a little bit more compact? Okay. Well, and more capacity. Yep. You know, you run the KSG. Yep. So you're talking roughly double the capacity of the Benelli here. You know, most of these are 7 plus 1. This is a 14 plus 1. So you got seven shots in each 2 plus 1 in the chamber. Yep. Which, I mean, it, I love these shotguns quite a bit. They're very lightweight, but boy, if you put anything besides like, you know, lightweight recoiling or a light recoiling buckshot like the uh, Federal um, flight control loads that mm -hmm. they have. I mean, you're going to get beat the hell they up. They kick the ever-loving piss out of you. But, but in a combat situation or, or something where you're getting shot at and you're just trying to survive, you're not going to be worried about that. Uh, one of the awesome things about this gun also is that it'll run the Aguila mini shells and it'll hold a mess of them. I think 25. 
Yeah, so it'll hold a lot of mini shells. You can run something like this with the Salvo 12 uh, mm -hmm. from Silencer Co. They do make adapters for this mm -hmm. where you can run a uh, Salvo on it. And with those mini shells, they're reasonably quiet. They're not bad, but yeah, it, I've seen these in pretty cool configurations with the Salvo in the six inch configuration on there. And I tell you what, it is a neat little package. Yep. You know, and at the uh, range day, Atlas Defense had their little uh, KSG out there with their integral style suppressor oh, on yeah. there, which was awesome. That was awesome. Yeah, we're gonna have to get in touch with them, see if we can grab one to do a video on. Um, what the KSG to me really embodies and, and where it, it fits this video concept really well is the fact that it's nice and lightweight it's small, it's compact, and for a truck gun, mm -hmm. that's what you want. Something you're going to deploy and take out of a vehicle, <clears throat> that's why bullpups lend themselves well. That is a bullpup mm -hmm. shotgun, so it lends itself well. You know, a full-size shotgun, maybe not so much, mm -hmm. but that's why maybe for some of you car goers who are wanting something in your trunk, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is kind of a fifth one here. Uh, we've got a uh, PAP pistol that I've SBR'd. We've got a uh, folding stock on it. So this kind of gives you a little bit of both worlds. If I've got to shoot this from a collapsed position, I can still shoot it from the collapsed position just like a normal AK pistol, but then I've got the option of uh, running my ACE folder on it, uh, uh, uncollapse my stock, I've got a stock, I've just got a little piece of pick rail here that I cut and uh, riveted in place on this thing, and I've got a little Vortex razor on there, great little red dot, and uh, I can defend myself out to, you know, as close as, as 10 yards or as far as 250 yards if I need to. And we've shot that little gun out to about 300 with, yep. you know, pretty good regularity. I mean, you'd be surprised what this thing will do with this little tiny red dot on there. But like Eric mentioned, from the collapsed position, this thing is nice and tiny. I mean, it's shorter yep. than both the Tavor and the PS90. And it's certainly shorter than the KSG. So that's a nice compact package. But yep. You know, SBRs aren't legal in every state, though. That's the only problem. They're not legal that. in every state. And something else I want to mention, th this gun may not be the best choice mm -hmm. because, uh, okay, so say it is legal to have an SBR in your state and you can own one. Do you really want to get involved in a potential altercation <coughs> using a, a, a firearm that's an SBR? Yeah. Then there's a whole problem of, okay, well, I went through all the trouble to get the SBR made, and then, all right, so for whatever reason, I had to legally uh, be involved in a shooting, and now my, my SBR my controlled item is now tied up in some form of, of evidence or the police are holding on to it or, or something like that. Yeah. It's just best to, to not get these kind of guns involved in that if you can, my you know, opinion. You know, I mean, for a little bit of added stability, you could always run a pistol with, you know, a brace on it. So, you know, yeah, no yeah, big deal. One but, way around it. And you can also carry a pistol loaded pretty much everywhere. Long guns, you can carry them with a full magazine or full you know, magazine tube with shot shells but you can't have one loaded most, most of the time. You're not supposed you know, to. So. And a lot of that depends on enforcement too. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, like in Georgia, that kind of goes to, uh, back to an old anti-poaching law that we have mm -hmm. on the books. You know, they didn't want people carrying loaded long guns because they're worried about people going around and poaching. I think we can pretty much surmise that nowadays poaching is not really a problem anymore in Georgia, but that law is still kind of on the books. Yeah. Um, with that being said, don't do it. I mean, at least from my perspective, best thing to do is just carry a chamber flag and leave it flagged. And uh, like on this Benelli, I can have a round on the carrier, mm -hmm. uh, on the follower ready to go. Yeah, we have a ghost pull, loaded. Yeah, grab, grab the, I use those yellow ones mm -hmm. that have like the two tabs on them. Pull the, uh, pull it out, rack it, and I can have a round in it in no time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no problem. So just something to consider. Make sure you understand all your local laws jurisdiction uh, mm -hmm. awareness there. Make sure you're doing it right, you know. You well, know, talking about SBRs, you know, we always yep. have to have some kind of a wild card. Always you know? a wild card in these so videos. So we actually had six, but we had two shotguns, kind of in the same category, but, sure. you know, crap really gets hairy. That's when you whip out the big guns. Oh, so yeah. So this is, you know, my personal SBR. It's a 5.56, 11 and a half inch barrel. I've got it, you know, decked out pretty much as much as I need. Um, we're running a little Trijicon MRO on here, Steiner D-Ball. I mean, this is a nighttime IR and uh, laser illuminator with a green visible laser for the, for the daytime. We've got a Surefire Scout light on here. can activate it with the switch on top. Magpul, Inbus Pro backup sights, and got an Adams Orange Piston Kit on here. This gun is great, and this is one of my Life and Liberty guns. And I mean, if you're talking about going into unknown territory or whatever, and you're still in your home state, and you don't have to worry about filing special paperwork to file your guns, you know, that's what I'm going to tote. That gun know. right there is very hard to beat, guys. And, you know, the thing is, 
there's probably a lot of people that might watch our videos from different parts of the world. They might be from even just different parts of the country we live in here that they might think, okay, well, all these crazy rednecks, they're paranoid. Uh, Americans are crazy because they carry guns everywhere they go. But I, I don't see anything wrong with having good situational awareness about you. And part of that involves being able to respond to any problem, uh, no matter how big or small, no matter where it may be. I mean, look at the recent attacks uh, from ISIS in France and all of the stuff that were going on. I mean, would a lot of those French citizens would have liked to have the ability to have a dang AR laying around to go toe to toe with those those people? If you're going to get shot at and you're going to you're going to potentially die in some shootout with some ISIS asshole, then wouldn't you wouldn't you want to have a way to fight back? Well, talking about just having uh, a I mean, firearm that's you know prepared properly. I mean, every firearm that you're going to carry for like life and liberty or you know just everyday use or a truck gun or whatever, you need a good light. And these little surefires, these things are great. I mean, they're a little bit pricey, but this can go from your pistol onto your rifle. I mean, as quick as pulling it off and just swapping it out. Yep. And that's a really handy little package. And they make switch packs for these too, just like the other guns. But that Surefire Scout, I'm going to be outfitting all of my rifles with those because that is a bad light right there. I mean, I would certainly trust my life to that. But So what if I'm a Frenchman that wants to pass a bottle of wine to somebody in traffic? Well, if it's one of the smaller bottles of wine, we can use the can-can. That's not a truck gun. You just made that up. Well, it's not a truck gun per se, but you know, I mean, if we're riding side by side or whatever and you get thirsty, you know. Just pass somebody a beverage in yeah, traffic? I'm just pass them a beverage in traffic. You just get on two-way radio and be like, hey, how far are you? I'm 100 yards away. This, this is the uh, Can Cannon from X Products. <laughs> you, you guys have probably seen this before. Uh, we love playing with this thing. Uh, we were one of the, the first people to really just kind of get excited about this particular gun. Well, it's really an upper that you get from them. Mm -hmm. But this uh, sucker here will launch a full can of soda or beer or anything you want to shoot. I mean, I wouldn't waste good beer, but... Well, i waste cheap beer. Yeah, but it, it'll launch a soda about 100 yards. Yeah. So it's it's something that's just fun to play with. Not a truck gun, but still interesting. Well, don't forget, you know, Yeti Rambler. you got to have your Rambler. You know? Yeah, keep your beverage cold while you're on the road. Well, yeah, it's just watering. Cold right heart, now. cold beverage, that kind of thing. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> well, uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. This has been five guns that are ideal for a truck gun or trunk gun. Uh, hopefully this point came across quite well, maybe gave you some food for thought. Carry a shotgun and a rifle, why not? Well, you know, depends. You know, if you got your wife with you, maybe she needs a shotgun and you have a rifle and, and the whole family can be armed. I don't need more than that. Well, you, you know, it, it is crazy <laughs> to think about because when we, when we travel, okay, he and I have traveled before to go on vacation, oftentimes with our families, uh, like when we go on a you know, family vacation. And oftentimes, we've even traveled. I mean, Ray and his family have been down with us before. Uh, the gunsmith here at Moss, he's been down for vacation. And let's just we're say all, we go prepared. Let's just say we tow ARs, and we, we're going armed. I mean, we might be going to relax and have some fun, but you always got to be willing and ready to respond to a threat or a problem where it happens. And you can't do that if you aren't properly armed at all times. And that, that's the premise of this video, is to make sure that you understand the options that are out there and you understand mm -hmm. what you can do. Now, with that being said, uh, make sure if you're gonna carry a firearm again uh, in your vehicle or whether it's in the trunk or whether it's under the seat of your truck or wherever, if you're going to carry a firearm in your vehicle, make sure you understand not only the laws of the actual state that you reside in, but the laws of the state you're going to be traveling through. If you're making a, a long distance you know, run and you're traveling through multiple states, uh, when you go with a firearm uh, through someone else's state, you have to abide by their rules while you're in their state. Mm -hmm. So make sure you understand uh, all of that stuff before you get on the road with a gun, yeah, assuming some, it's going to be okay. There's been some pretty bad, uh, bad instances with folks getting pulled over in uh, very unfriendly states as far as concealed carry goes and whatnot. And, uh, you know, folks getting put in jail over, you know, a very simple mishap. A misunderstanding. You know? It's oftentimes a misunderstanding. And the problem is, you know, they, they don't look at it like that. Ignorance is no excuse of not, uh, you know, of breaking the law. They don't look at it that way. They look at it like if you're going to travel through their area, you need to know their laws, their rules, their house, their rules. So just make sure you understand that. Uh, thanks for watching today's video, guys. we got many more on the way, more five guns, more gripes. Uh, more firearms facts. I know we've kind of uh, slacked off on firearms facts. A little bit. But uh, we do have more on the way. And, well, and of one, course, more stuff with Ray. More one last, uh, one last thought pertaining to this, though. You know, sure. some, some of you folks watching the video may think, man, those guys are nuts. I mean, why would they carry a shotgun, a rifle, and a car? Well, I mean, you look at the stuff that happened in, in Paris, and like Eric mentioned, 
I mean, if, if those people were, were better armed and whatnot, or if somebody maybe in one of those uh, areas where the attacks occurred, if they had weapons in their vehicle, maybe they could have gone out there and actually helped defend the place or maybe been a first responder to it if they were properly trained or just had the gumption to do that. I mean, we go prepared. So, I mean, some folks might look at us like we're nuts, but I, I'd rather be prepared and be thought of as a nut than be unprepared and be begging for my life, you know, I mean, if that's the case. Food for Sorry. thought, guys. Yeah. Definitely food for thought. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. we got much more on the way. Take it easy.